guys, so I knew this day was coming. I was totally dreading it. Transitioning forward to a toddler bed, here is what worked and didn't work for us. I'm Elle and I'm passionate about filmmaking and finding ways to be a great mom. All right, so first timing, I recommend if your kid is happy in their crib, do not mess with success unless you're planning the timing around a big event like a sibling coming. Ford really slept amazingly in his crib. We put him in fully awake, he would play and fall asleep, but then one day right before his second birthday, he started crawling out of his crib. All right, show me how you do it. Ford. <sighs> Once he had the technique, there was no stopping him. Now some of you suggested putting him in a sleep sack or putting a net over the crib, but we figured we'd just get it over with. For beds, you have two options. You can have your toddler go and pick out a big kid bed, which we'll eventually do, or if you have a convertible crib, you can take the side off. And I got some help here. We chose the latter because Ford's kind of on the younger side and I felt like he would appreciate still having like three walls of coziness. He seemed so excited for his new bed. Are you excited, bud? And so were we until the first night. Ford would not go to sleep and kept coming out of his crib. Ford, go to bed. Go back in your crib. I tried guiding him back what felt like a million times. Good night, Ford. Go to sleep. Not on the floor. He was keeping Presley up, and because Ross travels towards the end of the week, I actually found myself at 11 o'clock at night putting both kids in the car. All right, let's do it. And driving them around until they fell asleep listening to Frozen. Nothing about this was functional. Daddy's sleeping on the floor. So we decided to sleep train. We did his bedtime routine, which includes like rocking to relax him, nice multitasking Ross. We put him in his bed and then held the door shut while we watched the monitor. As expected, he came and tried to open the door. But to my relief, when it didn't open, he didn't like try to run all around the room. He just kind of scurried back to his bed. And he cried for about 30 minutes, three nights in a row. But thankfully, it was more whining rather than hysterically crying. But after the third night, something just clicked and he got it. Like, this is time to go to bed. I don't have the option of running out there. And we were really excited. We're like, okay, he's sleeping again. He was in his room from 8.30 to 7. And I was just thrilled to be able to make this episode and be like, guys, it was tough, but it worked. And then the regression came. And he started last week waking up at 4 to 4.30 in the morning and coming into my room. And he wasn't like upset, he was super happy. <laughs> Ford, it's too early. So this is the sleep drive state I'm currently at. I'm considering getting a lock on the door, although I'm a really heavy sleeper, so I, I'm not sure I feel comfortable with that. And also I'm gonna try one of those alarm clocks that indicate time. To be honest, I do not think it's gonna work with Ford. And then part of me also feels like maybe I should wait it out, because last week Ford also started putting together sentences. What got you now? What am I talking about? You're sleeping. <laughs> and I always believe that when something big developmentally is happening, kids find it really much harder to sleep. So that is where we're at. I at least feel like we've made a lot of progress and that he's going to bed, he's going down for naps. Um, but now we've just got to work on this morning issue. I even heard one person say, put the iPad outside the door, which I might try tomorrow morning. Um, so let me know if you guys have any suggestions. This is something we all have to go through. So I'm sure everyone will appreciate your thoughts. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.